Welcome to DEI Matters, Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. And I'm excited to talk with Dr. Henry Turner, and a principal at Newton North, and Kathy Lopes, the, the um, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for Newton Public Schools. Henry and Kathy, welcome to the channel today. Thank you. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you, so excited. And we are here today because we're gonna talk about their new book that they have written, which is called um, Change the Narrative, How to Foster an Anti-Racist Culture in Your School. Um, and so, like I said, I'm so excited to dive in today with them in regards to their book. And so before we get started, can you just share a little bit with uh, with the audience um, who you are, how we got here, how did we get to writing a book? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just start. So I'm Kathy Lopes, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at Newton Public Schools. I'm entering my third year in the district. Um, and by way of social work, um, I've been a social worker uh, connected to education for most of my career, over 20 years, and met Henry uh, in this role in Newton um, while he was a principal, while he still is a principal <laughs> at Newton North. So. Yeah, and so I've been an educator in uh, the greater Boston area for over 20 years at this point, and um, and have been principal at Newton North for seven years. And mm -hmm. through my, uh, my passion in education has been to, um, to you know, achieve, help stu all students achieve at a high level and particularly helping those most marginalized groups who feel like school is not for them to help them feel more connected mm -hmm. in school. And so when I arrived at uh, Newton North, um, we, my second week of school, we, we instantly hit a, a hate incident mm -hmm. um, where a group of students drove around um, waving the Confederate flag. And it was mm -hmm. a moment where we heard from our um, black students particularly who said that they did not feel like uh, the school cared about them. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a seven year journey there of trying to um, really uh, uh, dive into this work and help to create change in our culture to, to help create those improvements. And so. Um, when um, the pandemic hit and George Floyd um, and Breonna Taylor and um, Ahmaud Arbery, um, those events happened, uh, there were a lot of educators looking for, you know, looking at systemic racism and racism in their own yep. um, schools and, and calling for help and, um, and reaching out for help. And so I started um, doing some writing. I had um, connected with uh, uh, a publisher and, and um, they gave me the support to try to, um, you know, thought that we had I had a good a good story there mm -hmm. to talk to help principals, mm -hmm. and in terms of co-authoring is that, um, you know, I, I realized that this was a journey that I couldn't go alone, <laughs> and um, and you know as Kathy and I got to know each other, you know, I was we were talking a lot about writing this book. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it as I was going to be a support. <laughs> yeah. exactly. so, so you weren't you weren't looking at it as my name should be on no, this one. Not at okay. all. Okay. Yeah, but I would say that um, you know, I got some great advice of the idea of just that a, a second person can you know can really um, add to to the story. And mm -hmm. I have to say is that as the book finished, is that there is no other person I'd want to write this book with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kathy's lens as a uh, social worker, mm -hmm. um, my lens as a, as, a, as a leader who's really interested in the change process. Mm -hmm. I think that that, you know, that that human side and that change process side really helped to really strengthen mm -hmm. uh, the book. And so, um, you know, I think it was, uh, it, was a, it was a perfect partnership for us in writing it. Yeah, it, it reminds me of that you always, you know, we talk about having thought partners, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you all were a thought partner, but we get to hear, right, mm -hmm. what those conversations were. Um, that's the way I look at it as mm -hmm. you co-authored the book. Um, one of my questions to you is that, like, how, like, how did you arrive to this, at this title? Mm -hmm. um, you know, narr you know, change the narrative, and I understand that piece, but it's like, you, you, you're saying how to foster an anti-racist culture in your school, yeah. right? So how did you all come to this title? So, um, you know, there's actually a quick story to this and that a, uh, a teacher um, who had been thinking about um, the history uh, curriculum that, that he teaches and how when it was taught in a Western 
uh, from a Western perspective, it had a very tight narrative. Mm. Um, and as he uh, heard from students uh, of color feeling like they were not being seen, their history was not being seen in the curriculum, you know, he, his, first, uh, his first pushback was that, well, this disrupts the narrative. Right? And the reality is that history is not a tight-knit story, mm -hmm. right? There are many different stories. And so at one point he said to a group, he said, I realize that we have to change the narrative. Mm. You know, and I think it's symbolic of, it's a great metaphor of um, so many other things that we're doing in our schools, right? The stories that, um, that students of color are, um, are, that are underperformers in school, that students of color um, are the kids who get in trouble at school, the narrative that um, that students of color don't belong in honors and AP classes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this, the narrative that parents um, don't come to black black and brown parents don't come to school and don't care about their kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like um, it, like there's so many falsehoods to that, mm -hmm. and I think that those are the narratives that we need to change. Mm -hmm. And I think from the anti-racist perspective, you know, there's been a long time where that blame has been put on those people, right? Mm. Those parents don't come to school and therefore they don't care about those kids. Mm. Those kids, um, you know, get in trouble, they don't care about school. Mm. And I think from the, from, um, you know, Ibram Kendi's work, which I think was really, was, was really poignant in this idea that we can either uh, look at the system and blame um, those who it affects or mm -hmm. you can blame the system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so asking these questions, um, why do we see uh, d racial disparities when it comes to um, grade distribution or, uh, or discipline rates, mm -hmm. right? And what can we do to change that, that story? I think also to add to that, and uh, so Henry had presented this to me and he already had the title, but immediately I was like, that makes sense. And one thing about us is we're both, um, we, we have a lot in common about our journey through education mm -hmm. and, and into leadership. And one of the, the kind of parallels is we've both been like students of color in predominantly white educational institutions throughout mm -hmm. most of our lives and mm -hmm. even find ourselves now working in a predominantly white community. and. Um, Knowing what that feels like, uh, that there's this narrative about what standards and norms and success should look like and what behavior should be accepted and what shouldn't. And I think throughout this book, um, a lot that came up for me was my experiences as a student of always feeling like because I wasn't always adhering to what the standard was, which was kind of like the standard of whiteness, mm -hmm. that somehow it was my responsibility or I didn't fit in. And I think when I think about this book from a broad perspective is like, let's change the narrative as to what a standard is and mm -hmm. how can we accept diversity? How can we celebrate um, difference mm -hmm. and identity and open it up so we're actually appreciating and working with it all and not just holding folks to this one standard and if you don't make it, then you're excluded mm -hmm. from the community, you're excluded from your learning. Mm -hmm. So it's really about how do we shift that narrative to, to be more open? I think one, one final part is that it's a book for leaders in education. So whether mm -hmm. you're in a position like a superintendent or a principal or a DEI director, or you're a teacher who has a leadership role. And um, it's about the change process. Mm -hmm. So we really structure the book about how do you foster change, mm -hmm. how do you build culture. And so mm -hmm. I think the, the idea of change being one of the prominent components of the title. Yeah, I, I you know, going through the book, um, I, I saw that the chapters, they build on one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you all have really started with a good foundation. Um, so, like I said, as I read the book, I continue to revisit chapters. Um, good leadership, anti-racist leadership, and the cycle of learning for anti-racist anti leaders. It says, an anti-racist leader's lens reflects, acts, assess, um, and I, I think um, you, um, uh, did I miss one? Learn. Learn, Learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which I thought was a great kind of like, I'm like, this is for anything mm -hmm. that you right. do, right? right? That you should really be reflecting, assessing, right? Acting on it mm -hmm. because um, I wanted to get you all's opinion on as we talk about DI, mm -hmm. <laughs> anti-racism, mm -hmm. and I saw the chart. Do you think that that's happening? Do you think people are really like reflecting, assessing, acting on it? And, you know, like, 
is that happening or are we really being performative when mm. we start talking about this? Well, I can share just from my role in my role as a DEI director and hearing communities say, help us do this, right? But they kind of come with their own ideas. They already come with their own set agenda of what they believe should happen and what it should look like. And that reflection piece does often, like it's missed as to, what could you be doing? How are you perpetuating this process? And sometimes unwittingly, right? Um, so I think the thing about this book is we really wanted to create a way for folks to pause and really think about how to do this differently. Because here we are in 2022, we're still dealing with a lot of the same disparities and issues and racism within our education system. And so this was a way to have us just like stop and say, what do you, what's the self-reflection that needs to happen? The first half of the book really is on your own work. How do you pause? How do you reflect? How do you try things and say this works this doesn't work and then step into a leadership role where you can build and move people in that direction and I think what's what happens with some of the performative work and particularly what we've seen in the last two years is like this urgency to like make it better mm -hmm. fix it and not realizing that we are still participating in a system that is really harmful until we pause and think about you know what about this system needs to shift and what role do I have mm -hmm. in helping this system shift mm -hmm. then we're just gonna keep you know it is going to be performative it is going to be short-lived it's going to be superficial and not have the deep level of impact that we want so this cycle was created for us to try to do something different i also think that we're as educators we are we're incredible learners mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, what we know from research is that um, 80 percent of teachers nationwide uh, believe that anti-racism is something that should be discussed in in schools and um, so what we see is that you know, as educators, we read a book, and then hopefully it's this book, but we read a book, and we tomorrow want to implement right. something. We want right. to do it. And, you know, there's been so many experiences. You know, I, I have one that is, um, as a principal, I remember um, our, you know, our, we gave a training on the software for, for teachers. And the next day, students were just dazed and confused mm. um, and because this software had been used in every single class that they had been using, <laughs> right? And so the, that just shows what the educator mindset is, right? Mm. And so in this work, we have to be mindful mm -hmm. um, of what are our intentions, where are mm -hmm. our biases, mm. um, you know, why are we implementing this? And I think, mm. you know, some of the failed policies that we see nationwide that are DEI driven sometimes are because they're so quick, right? Like this idea of grading policy. I think mm. that some some districts have just said, you know, we're going to mandate that we're going to do, um, we're going to, you know, require that there are no more zeros, and they haven't explained to anyone in the community why they're doing that, right? right? And so therefore, it ends up getting this major backlash, mm. and it ends up failing um, at a, at a, you know, with with all likelihood, it mm. fails. And so I think we need to be mindful in how we implement it. I think we need to be strategic, mm -hmm. you know, and that's mm -hmm. what effective change is, is building a learning organization, bringing other people on, mm -hmm. um, not criticizing everyone on their own journey mm -hmm. uh, in their own understanding, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. sometimes those who are um, really quick to talk about DEI issues, um, you know, end up judging mm -hmm. those who are a little bit slower mm -hmm. or a little more hesitant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And therefore we create divisions within right. our faculty. So how do we, you know, recognize that we're on this journey together, yeah. we're on different paces, yeah. and as leaders, we need to be strategic in thinking about what is the, what are the issues that we really want to implement and think about a long-term plan to implement yeah. them. I am, um, you said something that really resonates with me, and I, I use that word, you said journey, mm -hmm. and I use that word um, with a PD that, that I did on Wednesday with someone where, you know, I was like, this is not, this is not a destination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not gonna arrive somewhere, we're yeah. on a journey. And I, and I said, you know, we might make some stops <laughs> right. along the way. Um, I, there's, how would you have a leader how would you have, so let's, you know, we have superintendents, we have assistant mm -hmm. superintendents, we have principals, and we have teachers. So we have teachers at the, in the classroom, mm -hmm. right? We have principals who oversee a building, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have your assistant superintendents who are either curriculum and instruction or finance and operation, mm -hmm. right? And then you have your superintendent that has to see the whole arc of mm -hmm. everything. And so here's this new book, right? And um, which I'm like, this is really great. And like you said, I was like, oh, wait, Margaret, let's pause <laughs> and it, I did I paused and I'm like 
huh, how can I start to introduce this book? Mm -hmm. So being a DEI director and really looking at some of what you all have written and some of the things that I also believe in, where would you tell me or where would you tell a superintendent or assistant superintendent or a principal, where would you tell them to start? Like, mm -hmm. okay, now I have this book in my hand yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I read it and now I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. Kathy and Henry, I, I'm not sure yeah. where. Um, I, yeah, I would, I would say you start in the first part of the book, mm -hmm. right? I think the first part is your own, is your own journey as a, as a, um, in, in understanding uh, racism and understanding the change process. Um, and, you know, I think that it um, helps to then think about how do you foster others. So the, the second part of the book talks about policy, how do you build mm -hmm. relationships with students, mm -hmm. curriculum mm -hmm. and instruction, mm -hmm. uh, building relationships with, with families in the mm -hmm. community. There you can bounce around to different chapters, but mm -hmm. I think to start, and you know, I think what we've seen with other, uh, with districts who are, you know, who are implementing this book with, a, you know, with, their, with their staff is, that they're using this to focus on the learn part first, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that's what the first part really is. And then reflecting, and that could take, you know, that could take a year to go mm. through that process. I think that um, to what you were saying earlier is that I've worked with districts that have said, you know, we put equity as our uh, on our school improvement plan this year. And I asked, well, how did it how did it go? They said, well, we're exhausted, mm -hmm. right? Like we're not going to solve racism tomorrow. <laughs> You know, and mm -hmm. so we need to think about this as long-term planning, mm -hmm. and that's why I think that to your question is, you know, dive into sort of where are we as individuals, where are we as a group, mm -hmm. you know, as an administrative mm -hmm. team, and then think about what are the topics we want to mm -hmm. take on. Yeah, there's actually a, uh, one of the chapters begins with, um, you know, the question I get right when con I, I also do some consulting when schools call me, school leaders. It's always like, what do we do? Tell us what to do. <laughs> and it's also like take a step back mm -hmm. and and have some vision. Who do you want to become? Mm -hmm. Right? What kind of school community do you want to become? Mm -hmm. So I think that once you've done the self reflection and you've really kind of like thought about who you are in this work and what you bring to this work, it's also take a step back and do an assessment of your community mm -hmm. and what's getting in the way. What do you know? about your community, who is succeeding, who is not, who, what are the experiences of your community members, and start to take that information, and then you can kind of break down, let's do this, or this is a goal for us. So I think that it's also really important that there's a process that you're responding to what you now have understood mm -hmm. exists, and how do you get in, take inventory and get feedback and identify you know, the voices of those who've been historically mm -hmm. marginalized to say, these are issues, and I know they're issues because, mm -hmm. right, I have this information, and we want to do better. Mm -hmm. So how do we start to tackle it? So I think what, like what Henry says, when you have this overarching vision of like, oh, it will be anti-racist and we'll be equitable, mm -hmm. without understanding what's getting in the way of that, mm -hmm. then, then it, it gets overwhelming, you get burnt out, right. and you're not actually like hitting the pieces um, that, are, that, are, that are the barriers to getting there. So mm -hmm. I would say have leaders step back and do an assessment of mm -hmm. your community and what do you know about your community and where can you start building? Yeah, mm -hmm. what, what are the outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. What are the mm -hmm. benchmarks you're trying to reach? Yep. Right? You know what I really appreciate that you said, um, because you know somebody can read this book, right? Mm -hmm. Back to cover and like, okay, let's go. Like you mm -hmm. said, let's go. And you, you said something, you said, the reflection part might take a year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is really like, <laughs> yeah. like, just saying that, right, stops people and it makes people pause and be like, wait, a year? And, and I think um, as we are doing leadership PD, we're, that's where I'm at. I'm like, okay, so mm -hmm. this um, introspection and identity, it's gonna, it might take us, yeah. <laughs> it might take us a year yep. to do that. So I really appreciate that you all are saying that. Um, how do you slow down though mm -hmm. <laughs> the leader that has the school improvement plan, plan mm -hmm. right? The SIP, mm -hmm. they've done their SIP mm -hmm. or now our strategic goals, like you said, we've put equity in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, how do you talk to me as a leader to say, okay, Margaret, I, like your vision sounds really great right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your mission even sounds really great. Mm -hmm. How would you get me to slow down so that we can do the work? And I don't want to say slow to go fast because I really don't like that saying. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so how would you get me to, to be as though that, to say to me, it's not that, you know, if I want this to go 
mm-hmm. the way I needed to go, I need to go with others. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So so how would you how would you have this consultation meeting with me where I'm like, I have your book, I'm ready, I bought two hundred, <laughs> I'm ready to s- disseminate, mm-hmm. which probably has happened, right? Mm-hmm. In some places. Now what now what do I do? I think there's so much in the book about kind of recognizing the barrier piece, right? Or understanding what could be challenging about this, right? What would be challenging about changing a grading policy and just pausing and saying, you know, we could have that idea, but what would that actually look like if we just decided tomorrow we're gonna change a grading policy? And what would we need to do? We need to build an understanding in the community. We need to build coalition Mm -hmm. around making it happen. Mm -hmm. We'd need to be prepared when resistance Mm -hmm. arrives. And and Mm -hmm. when we do this work, it's always gonna gonna present itself. Mm -hmm. So it's it's helping someone say, I get that you wanna get there. Let's really think about though, what does it look like to get there mm-hmm. because we can announce it and then what, right? Mm-hmm. What can we anticipate is going to happen? You're going to have educators that say, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have uncomfortable conversations in my PD. Mm-hmm. Parents that are going to say, um, you know, that's great. You have this mission, but as long as, you know, I want my child to continue to have the benefits and resources and mm-hmm. access that I have created, mm-hmm. right? There's this ownership about creating these resources mm-hmm. for, for students. Um, and so I would say for a leader, they really have to be prepared for what's going to be hard about this work. Uh, clearly this work isn't easy. We're still talking about this work. We haven't solved this issue. Our mm-hmm. educational system is still functioning in hist- like you know really old ways and mm-hmm. harmful ways. So someone wanting to jump into this, my, my pause would be, what, what is it gonna look like to get there? And what can we expect are gonna be some roadblocks to get there? And let's really break it down and think through who do we need to bring in? Who are our school leaders that we know children are drawn to or have been really successful, Mm -hmm. who would thrive taking on a leadership Mm -hmm. role? Who are the parents that we can utilize them to Mm -hmm. support? How do we communicate this, whether Mm -hmm. it's through our newsletters or community forums, and how are we learning about the experiences of those we want to support? One of the things that's really important in this work is that we are working in alignment, in alignment with those who we're trying to advocate on behalf of. And to make decisions without the voices of those who are experiencing the harm um, really isn't then about the community that you're trying to serve. So th- the other pause is who in this community that we're trying to support is a part of our leadership, mm-hmm. has a voice at the table mm-hmm. that is guiding us in thinking about some of the structural implementations we want to make. I think the I think the if we really want to turn off our, our faculty as a principal is walk into a faculty into a, a faculty meeting and say, I read a book. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you know, we know where that's going, yeah. right? Yeah. Here, comes the, the, here comes the eye roll. Yeah. Yeah. We got exactly. another initiative yeah. going, right? Exactly, right. Exactly, right. right? And so like this is what this is the this is the problem with all of you know all of our planning is that we want to try to do something immediately. We do a one off meeting mm-hmm. and then ask people to do it and then they feel like ill-equipped or Mm -hmm. they just have been around enough to know you know I'm gonna listen and then I'm gonna do whatever I want to do in my Mm -hmm. own classroom Mm -hmm. and so you know one of the things that I thought was an effective strategy around a reflection was um, was our math department they uh, for a year sat with this data that even though we were promoting the idea that um, students could move uh, up or down a level is that we saw is that actually very few students did. Mm. And so, in fact, when we said we weren't tracking, there were many, there was a lot of data that was reinforcing that we actually were tracking. Mm. Um, And we saw that um, black and Latinx students were in college prep and advanced, in in advanced college prep classes, uh, math classes, and that white Asian students were in um, honors and accelerated Mm. uh, levels. And so, um, and so, you know, before they just said, well, let's, you know, just blow up our whole level system, right? Like mm-hmm. that would not work, mm-hmm. right? So they sat with that data for a year to think about what are some strategic ways that we can address the fact that, you know, in many ways we are, we're, we're tracking. And so mm-hmm. then it took to thinking about what are some of the actions they can take and then let's pilot some of those actions. Mm-hmm. And so a small group did and, um, you know, it led to some of the improvements like some of our um, multi-level work, for example, some of our uh, work we're doing around grading mm-hmm. that has led to progress where we're seeing that we now have more black and um, uh, Hispanic students in honors and AP uh, courses and, and excelling in mm-hmm. those courses. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because they were mindful in their in their process of change. Um, I really appreciate what both of you all said. I think what I'm getting as we're talking is that and and 
this is a thing that we don't say. It's okay to slow down. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. okay. It's okay to pause. It's okay to reflect. Mm-hmm. It's okay to assess because that's what I heard you say yeah. in regards to the mm-hmm. math, right? Mm-hmm. And I, and I'm I'm thinking um, we don't really say that a lot. I think you have to say it multiple times in order for yeah. people to be like, oh wait, I can slow this down. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, I can pause for a minute. Oh, we're just right here. Well, it's okay that we're right here because this might end up back in my SIP again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. next mm-hmm. year, right? It might end up back in my mm-hmm. school improvement plan next year because this was phase one, mm-hmm. right? And this has to be phase two. Right. That's what I'm hearing you all say in regards to even how to like really kind of like utilize your book and really right. dive in. I'm hearing you say like, this is not like I'm saying, this is a really good book to read everybody and just, <laughs> yeah. you know, read it in a day. You're, you're really right. saying like, really d- dive in margaret and may- it might mean that i'm on like a ch- one chapter for the next six months mm-hmm. and that's right. where we're at that's right. what i hear you saying right and this is this is lifelong work right um the personal reflection is lifelong work it is a journey and and having this be a transformational change is going to take time i think what you're talking about too is the societal pressure to prove it works mm-hmm. right if we're going to invest in this we're going to give our pd time we're going to give you resources then you have to demonstrate that it's working and i think one of the things too is for us to really identify ways to demonstrate success that are not our traditional methods, right? Mm-hmm. That might not be in percentages or numbers mm-hmm. or certain data, that it could be stories. Mm-hmm. Or we have this community now we, is excelling in math mm-hmm. and in ways that they haven't. And how do we capture that? Because for, for two reasons, right? We have to kind of demonstrate that this is important and mm-hmm. it's necessary. But also when you want people to invest in change, they have to be able to, to recognize or feel the movement of change. So it's also finding like those those high points to say, this has happened. Mm-hmm. We've had some students now who never would have done this do this. We have faculty showing up in droves to participate. Mm-hmm. And those are signs of success that are not always traditionally measured. Mm-hmm. But it is undoing some of that thinking about what, what classifies as success and us being able to, to articulate that and, and use our voices and use our stories and use different measurements to say this is important and here's how we're showing mm-hmm. um, that it's working. Mm-hmm. And I think that the change happens in a lot of ways because of perseverance. Mm-hmm. And so there's uh, many years of activities and oh, workshops wow. that mm-hmm. you can do with your faculty. Mm-hmm. We have something in there for how to work with your athletic department mm-hmm. uh, in terms of a workshop. Mm-hmm. How do you work with a counseling department? Yeah. How do you give instructional feedback to, to teachers, mm-hmm. right? So it, it's something that you should continue to, a book that you should continue to come back to. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and you can put it away as you're you know, w- focusing on some parts of your, of your work and then come back to it years later. And yeah. so we hope it's a, you know, it's a timeless book um, in that um, you can continue to come back to it. Yeah. I think it will be a timeless book if we're mm-hmm. still talking about racism and, mm-hmm. st- and systematic racism. So I, I don't think this book is going to be going away. I think mm-hmm. people, like you said, are going to be taking it off the shelf um, on several times. I know it's sitting on my desk and I'm thinking about different ways mm-hmm. to, to really utilize the book and, you know, and just to really figure out how to phase this in. Um, I thank you all so much for being here. But before we end, I and Kathy knows this, I always like to ask, like, <laughs> what is that inspirational quote or what is that Gosh. song? You get in your car, it's been that day. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things I started doing as, you know, everybody likes to do icebreakers. Mm-hmm. So one of the icebreakers I've been starting to do is, um, is um, find a picture on your phone that brings you joy. Mm. Mm. Um, and I've just been staying with that because it's like sometimes the days are so hard and mm-hmm. this work is hard. So mm-hmm. what is an inspirational quote or what is that song? Gosh, um, it's hard for me to pinpoint a specific quote right now, but I do tend to um, really find like some of my, my thinking about perseverance really in Audrey, Audrey Lord quotes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I just need to feel kind of like the compassion within myself, I revert to bell hooks. Mm. Um, so depending on what I need, because I think Audre Lorde and her, her push for radical self-care mm-hmm. and being able to do this um, in non-negotiable ways and unapologetic ways mm-hmm. really resonates with mm-hmm. me. But sometimes it is also about being like, it's, it's okay and finding that compassion and some of the soft ways that bell hooks um, talks about this are places that I return to. I can't think, there's so many quotes, I can't think yeah. of anything specific right now on the spot, but but um, those are, are two authors that I constantly use to, to keep moving in this work. Mm. 
I'm gonna go slide on the family stone. I'm everyday people. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 I think it's a way of just thinking about that. Uh, you know, we've got to find joy in this work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we've got to be able to laugh, and mm -hmm. we've got to be able to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, you know, as we're seeing a lot of hate in our society mm -hmm. and tension in our society, is that we got to get in our car and we got to you know turn the music up okay. and, and, yeah. and smile, right? Yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah. Still got to stay committed to yeah. it, right? Thank you all for being Thank with you. me today. If you all are interested in purchasing um, Kathy and Henry's book, you can find it on Amazon. Um, I know that they were up there at the top. You all were like number one for, for like a, a while. Month, the first month. Yeah. Yes. So we want to get back up there. Yeah. So <laughs> if if your school district, if you're interested, if you're a community, um, go on Amazon and you can find it. Kathy, Henry, thank yeah. you so, so much for being on our channel. Again, thank you for being here again with Margaret Credo Thomas. We have more conversations that are coming up in the future. Take care.